Hello AP Stat students, we will finish up 12.1b by doing a T interval for slopes, but by hand. For their second semester project, two AP statistics students decided to investigate the effects of sugar on the life of cut flowers. They went to the local grocery store and randomly selected 12 carnations. All the carnations seemed equally healthy when they were selected. When they got home, the students prepared 12 identical vases with exactly the same amount of water in each vase. They put one tablespoon of sugar in three vases, two tablespoons of sugar in three vases, and three tablespoons of sugar in three vases. In the remaining three vases, they put no sugar. After the vases were prepared and placed in the same location, the students randomly assigned one flower to each vase and observed how many hours each flower continued to look fresh. Here are the data. So the tablespoons of sugar could be list one, and the hours of freshness would be list two. So the first thing you want to do is make a scatter plot, and here are the steps. Okay, make sure your y equals has no equation in it, and go to stat, um, edit, put in your list, your L1 and L2. Okay, and then go to second, y equals and that'll give you the stat plot. Turn it on, choose first graph, then go to list one and list two. Make sure those are your list if that's where your data is in, and then go to zoom nine, and that'll allow you to see the graph. And that'll give you the first graph, the sugar, tablespoons of sugar, and hours of freshness. So the very first graph, and I've already pre-plotted it, and you should do the same thing. Make sure you're writing all these steps down if you don't remember, and then go back and watch the video so you can actually see the graphs. After you do the scatter plot, um, you can't just jump to do the residual. You need to calculate your linear regression equation. So here are the next steps. And so I'm gonna put them in order. So the first thing you need to do is calculate the regression equation. And in order to do that, you go to stat, calculate, and you're going to calculate, you're going to scroll down to linreg and make sure your data is list one, list two. And you can store your um, linreg equation so it'll draw the line of best fit if you want to, or you can just write it down. So if you want to store the linear regression equation, you hit alpha and then trace, and then you're gonna store it in Y1. And when you store it in Y1, you will get, oh, and then you hit enter and twice. You will get your equation, which is Y hat equals 181.2 plus 15.2 X. So that's the first thing you do. The next thing you do, and you can delete that equation if you want. Just go back to y equals and delete it. So go to um, stat plot again. So second y equal. Make sure your graph, well, you're going to still use the first graph, so it's going to be on. So you're going to choose the first graph. This time, you're, you're going to have list 1 as your x, and but for your y, you are, or for your second one, you're going to choose the residual. So to choose the residual, this is important. Select second and then stat, and that'll pull up the list menu. In the list menu, you're going to choose RESID, residual, and it'll put it in that spot. And then you can just hit zoom nine. And that'll give you this graph right here. And that'll give you your residual plot. The last thing to do, and this is if you're not convinced that it's linear. So if the residual plot shows no leftover pattern and the scatter plot looks fairly linear, right now you can't really tell with those 12 individual dots. So the you do want to do the last thing, and the last thing is to make either a histogram or go through each one. Go histogram first, and if you're not convinced, then box plot because and you want to choose the modified box plot 
And then the last one, which is my fa favorite, is the normal probability plot. So to do all that, you know what, I forgot to put here, this was for the residual plot. And so after, to do that, go back to stat plot. And it's going to, it should be on still. You are going to choose the third, fourth, and last graphs. Just make sure that you are, for your, your X list can be fine, but you want the residual list. So again, go to second stat and make sure you choose residual. And then just go to zoom nine to see every graph. And I've shown you all of this in that, um, in the graph videos. Okay, then once you have all that done, construct, here's our four step process to construct our interval. So construct and interpret a 99% confidence interval for the slope of the true regression line for the state portion. We'll estimate the true slope beta of the population regression line relating flower freshness to sugar amount. at a 99% confidence level. Use a T interval for the slope, but here are the conditions first. So for the linear, scatter plot shows a moderately linear association. Now, how did I know that? Because when you get calculate your linear regression equation, it shows you what the R value is, and it was pretty, pretty good value. So it gives you your correlation coefficient. The residual plot shows no obvious pattern or curvature. For the random, so some of you I've noticed on the worksheet just do this and it's really irritating. Like it really bothers me. So Make sure you tell what makes it the random condition. So it's a random assignment. Of vases. For the normal condition, the histogram, because that's what I ended up drawing up there. Of the residual. Of the residuals shows it's weird looking it's not really normal looking but it doesn't show any strong skewness or outliers and honestly you can draw the normal probability plot and then talk about it instead i just drew the histogram For the equal variance, scatter is pretty even. From the zero line. Of the residual plot. And the independent condition, random assignment. of flowers to sugar freshness, or I'm sorry, to sugar treatment assures independence. All right, so seeing that all the conditions have been met, we can construct a t-interval for the slope. And so for our due portion, and again, this is in the video, but I will write down the steps here. So the easiest thing to do is find Sx, which is the standard deviation of our x variable. And it gave me 1.168. And that is a one variable stat. So one variable stat on list one. That'll give us the Sx. Now to get 
uh, little s, which is the standard deviation of our residuals, here's what we do. The formula is, it's the summation of x squared. So I guess I'll put the formula in here. Divided by n minus 2 and the square root. So to get that um, numerator, here is what we do. And I'm going to write down the information here. So go to stat, edit, and you are going to go to list 3 because in list 3 you have nothing and you want something in list 3. You want to see your values. So go to second stat and choose residual. So I think it's the seventh one, but whatever. Choose the residual and then hit enter or scroll, hit the arrow key. And that'll give you all the residuals. And then now that you have that, you go to stat, you go to calculate, and you want to do a one variable stat. And this time you are going to choose obviously list three. And you want this right here. Okay, so that'll give you that value. And that value happens to be. 566.4 and our sample size was 12 so 12 minus 2 so that gives us a total of 7.53 as our standard deviation of our residuals now we can calculate the standard error of the slope so the standard error of the slope is equal to the standard deviation of our residuals divided by um, sx times the square root of the sample size minus 1 because that's the formula for the standard error of the slope and that gives me 1.94 now we're almost done we need t star so t star is the inverse t Okay, so it's 99% confidence interval level, so it's 1% divided by 2.5%. So area is 0 0.005. Degrees of freedom is 12 minus 2. And that gives me a T star of, gives you negative, but these um, T star, Z star, all that, you just change it to positive. So. Now we are ready to do our interval. So our t interval is our slope, and our slope we got from our regression equation was 15.2 plus or minus t star times the standard error of our slope, which is 1.94. That gave me the interval as 9.05 lower bound 21 point now why is the interval so big because our confidence level was large it was 99 percent confidence so our interval is huge so we are 99 percent confident that the interval from 9.05 to 21.35 captures the actual slope beta of the population regression line relating flower freshness to sugar level And for part B, would you feel confident predicting the hours of freshness if 10 tablespoons of sugar are used? Explain. Well, if you look at your graph, your very first graph that we did, it was the scatter plot, it goes all the way to three tablespoons of sugar. Um, going Using 10 tablespoons would not be appropriate because it's outside our table of study, and that is known as extrapolation. We did talk about that in chapter three. So no, 10 tablespoons is outside our table of study. And that is extrapolation. So we cannot extrapolate that the case. And 
those are your notes for 12.1b. We will conclude with 12.1c, the significance test for slope. Have a great day, AP STAT students.